Hi everyone, um, my name's Jamila. Welcome to my channel, Z as in. Um, on this channel, we do arts, crafts, and sometimes fashion. Z as in is named after, well, it's kind of a running joke in my family because my last name is Zivankovic. And so um, when we're on the phone or talking to someone, we spell it out and the first thing we say is Z as in. So that's my brand, that's the story of my brand. And today we are going to be making, oh, by the way, welcome. And I hope you like this video and subscribe. Make sure to leave a comment down below. So today we are making this purse. Now, what? The purse is finished already. Is he as in a time travel company? No, I lost my footage. Great crafter, not so good video maker and editor. So I figured I don't want to lose the entire project. So I'm going to be showing y'all the techniques I use to make this. And hopefully you can learn from it. <coughs> Excuse me. Then at the end of the video, I'm going to show you my TikTok, which is what I have left of my video. We will not speak of the previous video after this though, because I am not happy about that. So as you can see, this purse is cylindrical with some beading. I used jute rope or twine to just wrap it around and hot glue it everywhere. And this string, I'm not going to show you how to make in this video, but it's just tassels on, um, on jewelry. Pretty easy. And you can see that the lid, sorry, I'm doing this one handed. There we go. The lid is just a snap on that opens and closes. Um, the jar I'm going to be using and demonstrating the techniques on today is a screw on because of course I'm out of oatmeal jars. Excuse me. But as you can see, just your typical lid. I did use some colors and some other techniques with cording. You can feel free to do that, but I'm just going to demonstrate the basics today. Very important note, make sure to keep this plastic unhindered. Un you see how this kind of goes over it, but it kind of doesn't. I'm having trouble keeping the lid on because I did that. So make sure that this plastic is safe and that this plastic is safe. Just the little bit around the rim because otherwise you won't be able to put it on and off and then you'll have a bucket, not a purse. I also did some lining. Again, I'm not gonna show you that in this video because I hope to do some sewing videos in the future. But it's just a simple technique of tracing this whole bucket, making a pattern out of that, and sewing it together. I even hand sewed it. Stowed it. Ha! Speaking. I even hand sewed it, and there's a little pocket inside, and as you can see, my wallet's in there. So is everything else I always carry around with me. So this is big, this is hefty, and this is a fun project if you want to make a purse and don't know how to sew. Or if you just want to make a purse. So, I'll show you the techniques in a second. Happy crafting! So the first thing you're going to want to do is have a long thing of four strands of twine. Now this one is really three, well, two and um, cording, but it's um, three because I folded over this edge to make two. You can see it's kind of short, but that's okay because I'm also going to be demonstrating to you guys the technique behind overlayering it. Um, so that, of course, you can't just have one giant thing of twine wrapping this entire thing. So I'm going to be showing you how you're going to just move on from one set of twine to the next one when you are out. Okay, so first thing you want to do is tie a knot right here. This is just going to hold it in place and you can cut the excess off of that too and if you don't want the knot there if you do it could look really cool and aesthetic i don't know but i decided not to so you're going to take your hot glue then put just a pinch of hot glue at the bottom and this is really important guys twist and make sure that the glue hits after the knot and then just push it down i recommend if you care about your fingers, I don't. I recommend that you put or that you use 
just a pen or something to hold it in place. But as you can see, here's the knot, here's the glue. So you have this little extra room that you can put your scissors through once you're sure that this glue is dry. And you can see that I'm just twisting. What you wanna do is just twist and twist and glue and twist. I burned myself. That's what I'm saying, guys. Make sure to use a pen. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and record all of this until I hit the end, and then I'm going to show you how to transition. And as you can see, one more thing before I do that, this is plastic. It's not going to work the same as my precious oatmeal canister. So just be patient and glue everywhere if you're using plastic. I do not recommend plastic, but... It's the only thing I had to show you what I used. So, let's get to it. twine so what I'm going to do is just carefully hot glue gun these last little bits down like so being very careful about my hands I might get the pen on this action no okay so as you can see that's wrapped around and that is not very much so I'm going to find that end again right here and I have this second length of twine and you can see that I have the knot again and what I'm going to do this rolled around sorry um where's the end there it is um you want it to blend into the end really well so keep twisting remember with this project always twist and put glue just over on top of that edge right there and then put your twisted piece of twine remember guys keep it away from the knot right over that keep going and if you want to do different aesthetics you can do different um, you know you can play with your twisting and how tight or loose you want it I usually like to keep mine loose but for this one I'm doing a tight one and now that the hot glue is dried what you want to do is get really close in there with your scissors and you can see that some of this is coming undone so I'm just gonna sneakily Put a little bit of hot glue in there. Use the blunt side of an object to just push that in. And when you get to your second layer, you're going to be going over this edge just a little bit. Just exactly how we did it with the other one is that we overlapped this edge just slightly and then made a slight curve around here. Um, so I'm going to finish twining this up and then I will see you guys for the next step.
next step. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take these push pins and just make a few holes. And as I predicted, this might not work on plastic. Okay, I got one hole through. Took a little bit of effort. I apologize, the camera is shaking. Then you just get another hole next to it. And y'all, this is gonna make a pretty big um, set of holes. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna um, just leave it as being pretty big and just go around it with the um, jute rope because the jute rope will shrink it significantly. And again, do not recommend plastic for this, but all out of canisters, so, and all out of footage, so we shall prevail. And I'm just showing you, you're gonna wanna make two little squares of holes right here. I'm gonna do that off camera to save some time and storage space, and then I'm gonna come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, so as you can see, I have eight holes. What I'm gonna do now is cut these little squares out with a little bit of plastic in between. And again, I hate that I'm using plastic, but it is what it is, and I promise to stop talking about it, yet here we are. So, I'm just gonna use the X-Acto knife here. Uh, by the way, everyone, y'all, um, if you are under 18, you definitely, definitely need to get your parents involved in this if you're gonna do it. Um, you know, sit down with them, watch the video. I'm not just saying this for the watches, y'all. I really don't want you doing anything unsafe, and this seems very unsafe. I promise it was very safe with the canister instead of the plastic. And, you know, when you ask the adults in your lives for an oatmeal canister, they're gonna think that that's weird in the first place. Um, but really, I wanna encourage you, if you're doing this in real life, oh, this is jagged. Um, if you're doing this in real life to, and you're under 18, really, really get your parents to work with you. Um, I don't want anyone getting hurt. Here's, or getting burned by hot glue or whatever. Here is the first square. I'm gonna do the second one off camera. And then we're gonna come back and I'm going to show you how to twine around the squares and how to glue around the squares to reinforce them and to make it so that they are straps. So let's get to it. As you can see, we have two holes. I'm just going to reinforce them everywhere with hot glue because again, I'm doing this with the expectation that you guys are going to do this safely, not with plastic, but with the um, oatmeal canisters I told you about. So that was a lot of hot glue. You see how it's shrinking already though? I'm just trying to make it as safe as possible. And ideally y'all, I you see how I'm only doing this on one side. You guys are gonna to wanna to do this once here and once here. So you're gonna to wanna to do it twice. I'm making it look horrible. And I know this is gonna be another opportunity for me to complain about my um, precious oatmeal canister, but it's not horrible. It's so easy on the oatmeal canister. That's why I'm constantly complaining. All right, so I'm just going to start wrapping twine around this bottom and show you guys how to go over this. It's really easy. You just want to wrap it in a way that, and I'm not going to have the voice over here. That's why I'm explaining it now. I'm going to have it sped up. Um, you're just going to want to wrap it in a way that goes around the holes. So if it's coming up on this hole like this, it's going to go under. And once it comes to the middle, it's going to start going over. So it's really easy, guys, and I'll show you how to do it in a sec. So problem, I ran out of twine. So I'm going to be demonstrating this with cording and this little thin twine, which kind of sucks, but at least you'll see what I'm getting at. And it'll look so much better when y'all do it and it looks so much better on my thing. But first, I'm going to be showing you how to thread this in such a way to where you can get a clip 
onto it. So what you're gonna wanna do is thread this through here and get a lot. I know I'm picking out a lot, but that's because it has to be wrapped around at least three times. Thread it again, and if you have a large sewing needle or furniture sewing needle, that might help because as you can see, I am really craning my hands here. Make sure it's tight in the back, but a loose loop in the front. So just like this. And I'm going to be putting it through one more time. Just like this. Okay, and as you can see, equally loose in the front, tight in the back. Now I'm probably going to end up ruining that by just tying a knot. I'm having trouble getting this on my camera, but I am pulling it tight to tie the knot. And I'm also going to cut this twine so that it works a little bit better. And there's a paper clip in my canister. Okay. Great job, Jamila. Great job. As you can see, just a big old knot right there. And then when you pull out the three layers like this, it should be about equal. Now the knot's kind of coming through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it here camera because genius okay and then I'm just going to hot glue it to the side now you can see it through there because it's a canister but we're going to be wrapping that in cording well we're not but you are you are going to be wrapping yours in cording um, just hold that down make sure it dries did not dry and once it dries you can then pull out these parts right here and it'll make a perfect little rope bit for your um, purse strap to hang off of so that's this part and again I'm just gonna speed through wrapping this because once you get the hang of it it's really easy it's more intuitive than it, something that I can show you via the um, via the recording, but it's just being careful for these loops right here and moving these loops right here around so that you can get it. But it's the same basic technique that we went over with this part down here. Oh, see you in a bit.
this one's a little bit different because you don't use the knot. What you do is you just try to gather it as best you can into this kind of um, multi-level shape. So this kind of spiral, oh, it went undone. Uh, of course it did. Um, you just want a spiral here, essentially. And what that's gonna do is that's going to keep it in line for when it's gonna make a little discus shape. And that's going to keep it in line for when you glue it. And then what you're going to wanna do is just keep, because you're gonna have the first bit of glue be at that center point. And then you're going to push that in there. And you can see it's kind of unraveling and coming undone. You can ignore that because you're going to fix that as you go along. This just keeps a base that you can keep pulling at. So as you can see, and the lid is really the hardest part. Especially with this because twine works a million times better. But then you just want to fold over and just keep going. And I'm burning myself a lot. A lot, a lot. Because twine is the best thing to do with this, or the jute rope is the best thing to do with this. But you're just gonna wanna keep twisting and pulling. take your needle and thread and wrap it around now usually you wrap like it around like three times you're gonna want to wrap it around a lot of times because the bead hole opening is um, kind of large so you want that bead to stay in just gonna pull that through and this creates a knot if you do it right and don't drop it like I just did okay it still created a knot and this is a fairly big knot I used larger ones for 
the other purse, but let's see how this goes. Trim it at the bottom, and then I have this bead here, and I'm just going to loop that thread around here a couple of times, just to like really secure it in there. And I want the loop to go around the smallest part of the bead right here, and the knot was too small. So let me try that again. I did not want to use hot glue, but I may have to. I'm just going to add more little loops of thread to that knot and hope that it hits where the other one does. This is not working well. Okay. Getting a big, big knot here. And what's making this a little difficult is that the thread is a little slippery. So keep that in mind when you do this, but I think this will be a nice big knot. It's not even coming off the needle now, so that's a good sign. Um, again, usually you do like three threading, three loops of the needle. I did not count, but I think it was like 10. That's a nice big knot. You can see that on camera. It's a big knot and we're just going to take this bead now and there we go it is now dangling and I'm just going to loop it around this hole a couple of times careful not to stab through the knot or else your bead or your thread is going to get stuck and if your thread gets stuck, you can't finish it out. Oh, I hate hand stitching so much. Okay. There was a knot that happened for no reason. It's still happening. This is why I prefer the machine. But you can't do a machine when you're beating, so moving right along. And it's a knot. For no reason. This is not my day. Okay. You can always undo a knot. I think my mistake here was making the thread on the needle and thread way too long. And so now it's creating knots and getting looped up and stuck. And we don't want that, but at the same time, I'm feeling lazy, so I'm gonna take that loop, put it through the bead, and do that a couple of times, pretend it never happened. The back looks janky, but that's fine. Okay, this is the last time it's going to go through, so hopefully this covers the knot. And I say that because you can kind of tell that there's some tension on the thread and so I might have to get my tweezers to pull that through. Okay, I'm back and I just have the tweezers to just yank at this through. Again, this will happen if you hit the knot or if you get too many layers of thread inside the hole because fabric is movable. It, it's not stiff like a hole in a bead. There we go. That dangles well. So now I'm just going to attach it to somewhere on here. And you want to take, you see how this is kind of loose and it's not really attached, but it's still glued on. It's just um, one of the looser parts. So you want to find places like that throughout your creation. And for me, there's all this blank space of plastic, but usually there'll be places that are a little thinner or for you it'll be covered, but there'll be little spots that are a little thinner just by way of how the twisting works or the braiding if that's what you want to do. And you want to pull that through and it's a little loose, but if you want it to dangle, that's how you do it. And one more time through the bead just so that it's secure. And again, I'm gonna have to use my tweezers for this. You have pliers that can work too. And as another reminder, although I'm sure I mentioned this earlier in the video, 
if you are under 18, get parents help or a guardian or an adult or someone because we want y'all to be safe. Okay. So that's good. And I'll just extra secure it. And then you put this through this little loose bit again. Sew it again. And you have, make sure to keep it the same length as the other strand. And there's the bead. So now all you want to do is just secure it by just sewing back and forth on this little piece of twine. And you can see that I'm getting the yellow a little bit sewn on, but that is okay. It really does not matter as long as it's secure when you first start sewing on the bead and secure when you, and knotted when you finish. And I think that that's enough. This next time when I go over it, I'm going to loop it. So you see it's going through here. I'm just going to create a knot by going around this a couple of times and pulling my thread. And that's one knot. I'm double securing this because I find that my hand stitches tend to not like me, so I'm just doing the other knot with the same way that I started by wrapping thread around the needle and pulling and trying to keep it away from that bead. As you can see, it is not close to there at all, so I'm just gonna wrap it a couple more times to just really hide it. That one might come undone as you work more with it, but um, that's okay because the bead itself won't be coming out when that happens. And then I'm just going to push it through a random part here just to kind of extra hide it. And then we cut it and the bead is on there. Look at that. Excellent. Hey y'all, so this is the finished demo purse. Now, at least it has all the steps and I hope that y'all could follow it easily and figure out how to do the real purse. So here, that is, and as you can see, it has all the concepts that we went over. It has the twisting, it has the start, it has the hooks and how to go around those. It has the lid. Now, I didn't show you the full lid, but honestly, when you get to this point, all you do is glue on a little handle if you want it, and then you just keep gluing more and more twine over here. I ran out of supplies, so I couldn't demonstrate that but it's really simple just keep just keep rolling and gluing essentially and so yeah I think I've gone over everything y'all need to know to make this um, what you do is you just continue it on the bottom just to reinforce that because it is a tin so it's not the strongest on the bottom I recommend aligning and what you do with that is you just take fabric a big circle of fabric um, measure it out to the exact proportions of the outside and trace the bottom into two separate pieces. Sew those pieces shut and sew them together and boom, you have a lining. And this purse holds so much, y'all. It holds more than purses that I have that were uh, store-bought. It holds way more than you would think of for just a oat canister of oatmeal, but make sure you get a large one obviously, because it's only going to hold as much as it could before. Um, so, yeah, that is the end of this project. Stay tuned for the TikTok video that I posted after this, or that I added into the credits after this, so that you could see what was left of my original recordings. Not much, but still, a little extra video might help, I don't know. 
and it definitely shows a before and an after so that's fun and until then happy crafting y'all